Hi family and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so glad to be joining you this morning. We're taking a look at the study, What is the New Normal? We never expected that we wouldn't be allowed to shake each other's hands. We never expected that we wouldn't be allowed to greet or hug or even meet in buildings together. But is that the new normal? No, God's word is our normal. We need to stir up our faith in His Word so that we can overcome the fear that the world is trying to throw in our faces. His Word is our final authority. So let's continue the study and stir up our faith together. We saw in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Do not be carried about with strange doctrines, with various and strange doctrines. Now, why would he say don't be carried about by various and strange doctrines? Because the, the, the devil is very skilled at using opportunities to tempt the church. So he knows that if he comes to tempt you, who are born again, your desire is to serve God, to read the word, to follow after God. He's not really going to win very easily to tempt you with a sin that is in direct violation of His Word. He may get it right now and then. We do slip up, but thank God for 1 John 1, 9, that if we do sin, we, are, we, we can confess that sin. And God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of unrighteousness. But I haven't found any Christians that willfully want to sin and use 1 John 1, 9 as they get out of jail free card. No, our desire is not to sin. So if that is our desire, and the enemy tries to tempt us, and we're able to resist temptation, well, then he has to use things that, you know, kind of we compromise on. You know, it's not so bad. It's not really, that's not really an issue. And if we're very not cautious, those lines can become blurred. And if they become blurred, we can lose sight of the original power of God. Jesus even said to the scribes and the Pharisees who were the pastors and the church leaders of the day, they, they had been following after the letter of what the law said, but they'd also brought in a lot of other traditions based on experience. And he said to them, your tradition has made my word void. In other words, things that you think make good sense, they sound right, they sound great, and everybody agrees with it because the majority is, you know, if you're raised in a house that way, and mom and dad have always done it, well, that's how we do it at our church. He says, yes, but that's a tradition. You've actually stopped the power of God from working. And so we've got to be very careful that we don't allow the world to influence how we do church, who we are as the church how we respond as a church. Online is wonderful. It's a powerful tool that enables us to get into homes that normally would not be able to get here. We've got people around the world that consider the Bay Christian Family Church to be their church. Now, if they're living in a you know, 12-hour flight away, we can't expect them to be here every Sunday in the building. And so thank God for technology that enables them to connect. But family of God, if it's within walking distance, driving distance, I want to be where the saints are. Because the word says to not neglect the gathering of the saints. There's still power in the gathering of the body. There's a corporate anointing that we don't want to lose out on. And so we've got to be very cautious that as things happen around us, they don't adjust the original tenets of the kingdom of God, the original commandments, the original instruction. We've got to look at the beginning and the end. Jesus said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so even throughout eternity, there's certain things that will always be done. Even when we're done from this planet and move on to heaven, things are going to continue in a certain way. So it's important to know what those things are. And so we went through the Word of God and we found out that God had said right from the beginning to Adam to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, to subdue it, and take dominion. And when he sinned, the curse entered in. That didn't change God's plan because when he spoke to Noah, he spoke the same plan. When he spoke to Abraham, he spoke the same plan. And then all the way through until Jesus had paid the price with his life, the Bible, Paul had written in Galatians chapter 3, 
that he, what had happened was Jesus, who was a curse, became, who was blessed, became a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is he who hangs on a tree. So he became the curse so that the blessing may come upon us also. So you can get the idea here that God's plan has not changed. God is not thrown by a pandemic. Just because something happened in the earth, he doesn't say, oh, well, now we have to change all our plans. And so Acts chapter 3, verse 19, the word talks about repent, therefore be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus Christ. God wants to send Jesus to return to the earth. Very often people ask, what is the signs of the end? And everything that we're seeing in the earth today is showing that we're close to the end times. But Jesus even said, when you see these things, it is not yet the end. And so we can start to say, well, all of this is happening. Isn't it time for us to be raptured? No, the word of God says that there's something has to happen before Jesus returns. And it says here that he may send Jesus Christ, verse 20, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until. So in other words, Jesus is in heaven until a certain time. What is that time? The times of restoration of all things which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. So it began with the very first word that he spoke. That promise, that blessing still has to be fulfilled in the earth. So even though sin tried to stop it, Jesus came to get it back. Someone say hallelujah. And we saw various scriptures. We don't have time to read them all. As I say, we've already done it. We saw that Jesus out of his own mouth said, For this purpose the Son of Man has come, to seek and save that which was lost. He said he did not come to condemn men, but to save men. He said that he came to destroy the work of Satan. And so the purpose of God is to destroy what the devil tried to do in the garden and to restore what God's original plan in man was. That's good news. Amen. So family, no matter what has happened in your life, remember Jesus said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. John chapter 10 verse 10. So Jesus said the reason he came was so that you could enjoy the life the way God intended for you to enjoy it. Satan came to try and destroy that. Now, if you listen to that scripture, when he says that the thief came to steal, to kill, to destroy, I came that you may have life. Do you notice there's no blurred lines there? And people sometimes wonder when things go wrong, I wonder if this is God trying to teach me a lesson. Maybe I'm being punished. But notice Jesus didn't draw any gray lines there. He didn't say when things go wrong, sometimes it might be God. No, he said that's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If it's stealing, if it's killing, if it's destroying, you know it is the devil. If it's life, it is God. It is Jesus. And Jesus came to restore that life. So no matter what has happened in your life, sometimes people wonder when things go wrong. Where is God in all of this? Family, God has always been there. But we the ones that have to recognize if something goes wrong and then we think somehow this is God, we'll never be able to get out of it because Satan will hide behind that religious facade and keep destroying that person's life and they'll kind of just give in to it because, well, maybe it's just God's will for me. The day you decide this is not going to happen any longer, that you're making a decision no matter what Satan tried to do in my life, Jesus came that I can have life. That's when you can stand up and fight back against what God has given for you to do. Against what the enemy is trying to do and stand for what God has given you. Remember the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God. So faith recognizes that God is, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. The Bible tells us that we to submit to God, and we to resist the devil, and He'll flee. James 4, 7. So if it is our responsibility, we need to recognize that responsibility so we can stand in it. And so we had a look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation. 
For everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So if the just are to live by faith, I need to ask the question, how much do you need to stay alive to live? You know, it's not like if you drop something, you can pick it up again. I mean, if you stop breathing and your body stops and you die, is that living? I mean, you know, if you die and then you come back to life, die and come, no one lives that way. Living is done 24 hours a day. I said living's done 24 hours a day. If you stop living, it's called dead. Isn't that right? So if living's done 24 hours a day, the just shall live by faith. This is not something we do on a Sunday. Living by faith is not something we do when we're in trouble. It's not when we suddenly need God. Living by faith is, that's how you live. That's your very status of being is living by faith. And he says here very clearly that it's the gospel that is the power of salvation. So if the gospel is the power of salvation, that word salvation, remember it's the Greek word soteria. Uh, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's number 4991, 4991. Soteria, the root word of soteria is sozo, S-O-Z-O. It means deliverance, preservation, safety, and salvation. Preservation, deliverance, safety, and salvation. So we recognize from that word that when we were lost, we needed Jesus. Somebody presented the gospel to us. We chose to believe it, and we gave our lives to Jesus. The moment you did that, you were born again out of death into eternal life. You were saved out of hell and destined for heaven. That's salvation. Now, that salvation of your spirit, man, old things pass away, all things become new. But have you noticed your soul needed more work? You still thought in a certain way. You still said things you didn't like that we'd said. All of us have done it. We said things we didn't like. We said things we know were wrong. We did things that were wrong. What's that? That's the soul. And the Bible talks about receiving the implanted word to the saving of the soul. That saving is an ongoing process. And so it's the word of God that transforms the way that we think. So sozo talks about your salvation into eternal life, but it also talks about continuous provision, continuous protection, continuous growing in the things of God. And so the gospel is still the same power for that. You and I would know that we could be healed if we didn't find out from the word of God that by Jesus stripes we've been healed. We didn't know God was interested in our personal well-being until we found out that my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We didn't know those things until we discovered the Word of God. So it's the Word that's going to bring that salvation, that soteria to us. Matthew 28 verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Family, as Jesus was leaving the earth, these were the last words that he spoke to his disciples. This would make it one of the greatest words ever spoken. This is the intention. When Jesus is done with his three and a half years of ministry on the earth, and he's leaving the earth, and he's completed his assignment here as Savior, died and already rose from the dead, now ascending to be seated at the right hand of the Father. His departing words are, go make disciples. He didn't just tell us to sit in a building and feed ourselves. 
You see, that's where we got to be cautious because it's so easy to say, well, you know, now that I've found online works, I can watch any church in the world. You know, I can watch any preacher in the world. God gives you specifically the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher for the equipping of believers for the work of the ministry. God puts somebody into your life that's going to challenge you and increase you and grow you to become more of what God's called you to be. But just me sitting at home listening to that, well, at least I got blessed. That was a great message. I got something out of that. It's not about me. You see, when I first was saved, I needed Jesus. How many you say amen to that? I knew where my life was going. I knew what a mess it was in. And yet when I gave my life to Jesus, I was born again. When I got saved, I realized we needed healing. Janine's body needed to be healed. We realized we were in financial mess. We needed to be delivered out of that. We needed children. We trusted God for that. The doctor said neither one of us can produce children, but we trusted God. And, we got, and God blessed us, and we have children of our own today. And now the grandchildren are on their way. One's already here, and more to come. Amen. So we, we, we needed a lot of that in the beginning. But it took a while until we grew up, matured in the things of God, where you realize God's not just there to fulfill my shopping list. He's not just there to get everything I need. Every time I need my rent to be paid, every time I need a new tank of petrol, I discovered that I am blessed, that I am healed. God has provided my every need. God always there for me. He always protects me. When I need Him, He gives me guidance, inside direction. God's always there. I don't have to try and get that anymore. God has given it to me. But why? Jesus said, freely receive, now freely give. In other words, if me getting saved was just to get me to heaven, it seems the best plan then is just take that person off the earth immediately. It's happened before. Elijah was removed in his body. Enoch was removed in his body, weren't they? They didn't go via the grave. So God can do that. How many of you know of Christians who have given their lives to the Lord, served Jesus, served in the church, and yet when you look at their lives today, they backslidden. They, some have even renounced God. They don't even want to know Him anymore. How many of you know anybody like that? Only five people. Okay, so I'm glad it's so few in this town. But other churches I go to, more people put their hands up. And so, you know, how many of you realize that it's, there is a potential of people backsliding? So if it was all about just getting people to heaven, it seems the best plan is have an altar call, and the moment says, I believe Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Okay. Praise God, He's in heaven. We just need to leave a handful of people that are going to make it, and God knows He can trust at least, you know, Alan Bag won't give up. He'll, he'll keep going, but the church is empty because whenever you get saved, you're gone. No. Have you realized when you got saved, yes, we were translated into a kingdom of God, but not just so that we can leave here and go to heaven. We were translated so that we now can now take up that commission. There are others out there that don't know what you know. There are others that haven't discovered the word. How many of you, when you first got saved, and the first few weeks you sat, you went, what? What? Hallelujah. Really? That's in the Bible? Come on. How many of you went through that kind of process quite a few times? It takes a while. After maybe two or three years, you start to say, Amen. And then you quote ahead of the pastor. And then you know after that scripture comes this joke. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so you, you, you kind of get used to the flow. And it's very easy to get that point and go saying, But I'm not learning anything anymore. I'm bored now. No. No. We here to be equipped. Faith comes by hearing and when i hear the word of god it's like you know if i'm working out and i'm training i have to make sure i feed my body properly it's i, I can't go you know to gym on on last week's steak if you how many of you ever try to work out or go for a run or do something without having eaten properly have you noticed you get halfway through the workout and you're like man i don't want to finish this why because you're living on the memory of yesterday's meal 
We have to be fed every single day. We must keep the nutrition alive in our body. We must make sure that we keep exercising, keep moving. Even if you don't keep training, what will happen is your muscles begin to atrophy. You begin to grow more lethargic, more tired. And that's all true in the natural. But whatever happens there, it reflects in the realm of the spirit as well. If we don't exercise our spiritual muscles, we become spiritually overweight. We become spiritually lethargic. Well, I don't know if I really want to go to church this week. I can just catch it online. No, that's not the reason for online. I understand if you can't get into the building, then yes, join online. If you can't get to the distance of the building, join online. But we still need to be together. I don't ever want to get to the place where I just take it for granted. You know, God supplies my need, but never ever put the tithe in, never ever return the seed, never ever speak the word of God, declare it. Because that's what got me free in the first place. Why would I, after being a Christian for a year or two, start to question whether those things are really so or not? Because that's what set me free in the first place. I'm not going to let the devil steal my testimony. One of the things that I've been hearing floating around is, Pastor Allen, what's the new normal? In a world that has been turned upside down with the threat of wars, pandemics, racism and calamities. Family God, God created man to have dominion over creation, not for creation to dictate to man what he must do. In this series, Alan Bagdells into the promises in God's Word, reminding us of the unchanging, all-powerful, ever-present God we serve. If you want to talk about normal, this book is the normal. He helps build our faith to stay focused on God in these unsure times. The very first word, creation years, is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and take the link. Visit us online or make use of any of these details. But get hold of your series and strengthen your faith to see God's power working in and through your life. Wow, family, what a powerful message. It really is one of my favorite series. And I want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy. You can contact us at the details below and use it to study it through. We need to build our faith so that we can live out God's normal in our lives today. Now, my friend, I don't know what is happening in the world around you. You might be experiencing fear right now, but I want to pray a prayer of peace over you. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for our friends and partners. I thank you that they are experiencing your peace that surpasses understanding. You are right there with them right now. You are guiding them every step of the way. They feel your peace and your joy, and they can experience that in their lives on the every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I know you are experiencing God's peace right there with you. And as you see His hand continuing in your life, won't you share those testimonies of breakthrough with us? We would love to hear from you. So you can contact us at the details below and we will get those testimonies from you. It truly encourages us. Well, family, that's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow as we continue this exciting study of what is the new normal. My name is Brittany, reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. With a call to equip believers to flourish in their ministries, Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God.
you can join us in the Helderberg at these times at Section 3 Gan Center on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street in Somerset West. If you're in the northern suburbs, you can join us at Durbanville Live at these times on the first floor of the Durbanville Conference Center found at 27 Wellington Road. And if you would like to join us at Paul Live, we're on the first floor of the Berlin Center on the corner of Optonhorst and Berlin Streets. You're also welcome to meet with our family in Claymont in the Claymont Community Hall on Main Road. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're not close to any of our locations, feel free to participate in our online services over the weekend at alanbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Allen Bag Ministries airs all of our programs on our YouTube channel. If you missed any of our programs, you can either contact our offices and get hold of them or subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you never miss a single program. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. Today we're going to carry on with You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience. Hello my friend and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag and this week we have an exciting time ahead of us. You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience, where and when you want, on our Alan Bag Ministries YouTube channel. Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Watch Wisdom for Life on our YouTube channel and subscribe to never miss out on any of our programs. For any info, please contact us here at alanbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.